<laughs> it's pretty funny. All right, this is my chicken door opener project. This is definitely something for a wood gears club because I uh, used Maddie S. Wendell's gear generator for this. I was really just going for something large enough to fit my needs as well as have a 10 inch opening for chickens. I may actually start reducing my openings. I think it would help keep larger critters out. We're replacing this with a toggle switch, a temporary push down type, having two directions for a manual override. Otherwise, it uses this photo cell here. You can see here, uh, I have these sensors. This one is already pushed down, let me show you the other. This sensor gets tripped. So what happens is that it actuates and trips the, the sensors. That's how it knows to stop. And what's cool about that, it means that this thing can be really variable and unpredictable, or there can be a breakdown from temperature changes, things like that. And I'll know because of the sensor it's not being tripped. It really couldn't be any prettier, could it? <laughs> There's just a few I.O. pins used, you know, just a few. Yeah. There's a lot of crap going on here. Let me have, uh, had a bit of second system syndrome here and uh, overbuilt what this thing did, because it does a lot. Anyway, here's my uh, Raspberry Pi 2 I'm using as the brain. And uh, I looked around in some forums and people were complaining about only being able to use this to drive the power. Um, all I did was just, you know, solder directly to it and I just tested and it works fine. Last thing I have to do is jam this in here and uh, tie in my leads and then I can just talk USB to the uh, rest of it. This thing is packed. This cover was simply something that uh, was at a, a thrift shop. It was like $5. <laughs> but this is clearly a $20 plus dollar enclosure here. So I'm just using it because it's convenient pretty much. After much rigmarole, I finally have this working. Here's my box. Put a sandwich bag around that Raspberry Pi 2. Everything's contained. I had to do the last of the I.O. mapping, but it's too late right now. I basically just have to make sure this is all the right sensor connected to the right H bridge relay, etc. So we have our Raspberry Pi 2 talking Ethernet, going to a router, blah, blah, blah. I can potentially do some port forwarding, access it over the internet. Uh, I do have some other strategies like sending an email commands, that sort of thing. Right here I have a heavy duty resistor. It's only half an ohm, but it's just enough to stop this uh, low end power supply from tripping when the high amperage is pulled from the uh, windshield washer motor. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this a few times so you can see it. What happens is this fiber optic here detects the photo level whether it's day or night. There's also a temperature sensor right here. And uh, if it's light out, then it will open the door. When it gets dark, it will close it. Now, you may be thinking, what if a chicken is walking through it when it's closing? Uh, yeah, that is a concern, especially because I haven't calibrated the photo level. So, <laughs> if a chicken got in there, I think there's a good chance it wouldn't kill it if it was hitting the midsection, but if it had its neck through, then I'm fairly certain it would break its neck. I have some manual toggle switches. This is how I was controlling the door. This will actually do all the doors. Uh, and everything works in sequence rather than in parallel, so it's only pulling the same amount of amperage every time. So I only have one door hooked up at the moment. This control is for the water. I think what's happening is my really measly pressure tank is, uh, has lost most of the air. So even though I have to adjust the values to make it work a little bit more as expected, at the least what I'm hoping is, as this thing runs periodically, it's going to uh, overflow these bowls and sort of keep them clean. One thing I realized is that this line is going to hold water because no air can get to it right there. So I could take the line and, and put it slightly above the water and have it spray in at a diagonal. That would kind of fix it. But what I'm hoping is that gravity will just cause all of this to, uh, to empty and refill the line with air. 
obviously that's not going to happen. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is purchasing a couple of check valves and sticking them up here so that once the water is done flowing, air can just get in and hopefully drain the line. So sort of a, a anti-freezing mechanism you see on spigots and such where you would close it within the housing that's conditioned. I'll be releasing the source code for this. You can find a link in the description, but not the circuitry itself. It's just too time consuming to attempt to document all that stuff. And uh, if there's enough public interest, I'd be willing to do it, but I stuck my open source incubator project on YouTube with the same proposal. And uh, I only had one taker. So clearly <laughs> there's not enough demand. There aren't enough engineers among the chicken crowd to warrant uh, actually posting that sort of thing. And the other thing about this is uh, you could definitely do all of this with out of the box parts. There's nothing that special about it. So it would cost probably around $1,000 or something like that, whereas I spent very little. Uh, but I spent a lot of time on it. And uh, that's just because I like solving problems. I like engineering things. So it's not a big deal for me to spend a lot of time on it. Mainly these door opener closers tend to be pretty expensive. Uh, I think you, you can expect to spend between probably $150, $300 per. And my system supports up to three of them, although I only have one installed at the moment. You can pretty much expect there to be some failures and you should always consider that in your software because your software is going to be your highest intelligence in the handling of anything. You know, you can have hardware faults, you can have corrosion, oxidation, you can have all kinds of things that trip things. Arcing that causes a carbon layer and then you lose contact, you know. So there are all kinds of possibilities, but your software should be as close to being able to compensate for every scenario as possible. And that's always one of the tricky things when it comes to writing an automated system. If you enjoyed this or found it helpful or inspiring, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I was digging through some files and I found some old videos and pictures of inventions that I created in the past. This was about 2006 to 2012. This first one is a kitty cat arcade. All of the functionality is packed into a single Atmel 328P chip. The music is driven by the main loop. Control Logic uses background interrupts to minimize 